much for having us. I appreciate the opportunity to share with you uh, some of the things that are going on at uh, MIN. And obviously all this in the framework of uh, the upcoming IAA here in uh, 2024 in Hannover, people and goods on the move. And yes, that is exactly what drives MIN. People and goods on the move in zero emission technology going forward. So what does it really mean? Obviously, we all understand that uh, decarbonization is a joint responsibility we all have in our transport industry. However, there are several aspects in this formula that need to play with each other in order to make this happen. We as OEMs have the responsibility to put products out there that fulfill the requirements. But you know, these products cannot stand on their own because if you go into BEF technology, you need the infrastructure, you need renewable energy as well as, and let's never forget that, the TCO case, meaning total cost of operation, that provides a payback for our customers because we are in the B2B business, which means the decision to buy a vehicle is an investment decision for our customers and therefore they look at it at hard financial payoffs. Unfortunately, if any of these factors in the formula don't materialize, the entire transformation will not take off. So let's focus on product first because that is one of the core responsibilities that we obviously have as MIM. Our advantage is we are not only in goods, we are also in people movement, which means, you know, in our bus operation, we have already gone through this transformation. I can tell you that 70% of the tenders that come to us these days for city bus applications require BEF technology already. In 2023, we already sold more than a thousand BEF vehicles into that segment on the bus side and we became, we became market leader in Europe in BEF city bus applications. Which means we have already gone through a significant learning curve on this technology and application. Which we then utilize now to go through the transformation on the trucking side as well. We have provided a new concept that we will launch here in 2024 with a so-called exclusive early fleet starting uh, in the summer here of 2024. And the base of our technology is a modular battery concept. What does that mean? That means you can basically spec the vehicle with different ranges, meaning how many batteries do I need to really fulfill my requirements. And you can do this in a modular concept between three and six battery packs on this type of vehicle. But the true advantage is that we, with this approach, can basically already meet a lot of application fits for all types of different applications and segments in our marketplace. On the one hand, you can meet long haul demands because with a full six battery pack, you get 800 plus kilometers of range in a daily basis while you use the driver's brake to obviously also recharge some of the battery capacity. But at the same time, you can also utilize a higher payload if you have smaller ranges and requirements, for example, for more city or regional applications. At the same time, yes, you can utilize full megawatt charging on this vehicle, and we have already proven that together with ABB just a few weeks ago in our uh, facility in Munich and because of this wide range of applications that we can now demonstrate to our customers, we are in the uh, very fortunate position that we already have over 2,000 order requests for this type of uh, vehicle now on our order books. It's IFAT, you know, a special uh, show in Munich, especially for the call it recycling industry, we were now able to provide our first glimpse on the spectrum of product portfolio of this type of technology. And the simple formula is, whatever we can provide you in diesel technology, we will be able to provide you in BEF technology as well. 
which is of course a tremendous advantage for a lot of municipalities as well as a lot of bodybuilders because they can basically build on the same chassis that they're used to from the uh, diesel side as well. And at the same time, we will build these vehicles in our facility in Munich, one after the other. So there's a diesel truck coming down the line, the next one is a BEV truck, the next one is a diesel again. It will all float through the same uh, manufacturing process. But you know, I think part of the transformation is as well that we don't just provide our customers with the product, we also have to provide our customers with the right consulting in order to hold their hand and guide them through this transformation. How do we do this? You know, we have special tools developed for our sales force where they can explain to the customer and do a calculation. If you take this route and you further serve it with diesel, here is your calculation. If you take the same route and you provide and we provide you with the right vehicle, here is how the economics will look like if you transfer that route from diesel to BEV technology. And this is what we call the 360 degree e-mobility consulting. So now we also understand and that is our assumption that basically 85 to 90 percent of the applications that we have on the diesel side can be transferred into BEV technology for the zero emission journey. However, there will be 10 to 15 percent of the market that may and have to require different solutions. And that is why we also made the decision to invest into H2 technology, specifically into H2 ICE technology. And therefore, this HTGX complements our approach on how we provide zero emission solutions across the entire diesel portfolio. Where does this play a role? This plays a role in specific long haul applications and or specific heavy haul applications. I was lucky enough to uh, also drive both the ETGX as well as the HTGX uh, in our winter testing in North Sweden and it's actually for me kind of a typical evolution. You drive a diesel first, then you move to the hydrogen and it already gets quieter and then you drive the E and it's really quiet. And the advantage from the hydrogen ICE is that the uh, performance of the vehicle is very close to what our customers are used to on the diesel side already. And so we made the decision that we will do a limited uh, edition on this uh, HTGX for now. And uh, I'm happy to report also that we already have more than 100 firm orders on this type of vehicle across Europe, specifically Norway, as well as the Netherlands and also some Middle Eastern countries who want to test and uh, apply this type of technology going forward. But this is not all and I think that also demonstrates some of the challenge that we have as an industry because right now you need to play the cards where do we invest in which technology to achieve zero emission. So it, we will not stop here, we are also investing into fuel cell hydrogen technology uh, through the Bayern Flotte, which is of course uh, also subsidized through the uh, state of Bavaria here in Germany. And we're working with five customers to hand over vehicles here in 2025 for that type of application as well. However, what that also means is it obviously requires a lot of investment, a lot of manpower, and a lot of very, I would almost call it meta project management to make this all happen at the same time. Because let's not forget, in 2030, we would like to have 50% of everything that we build in zero emission technology, but that means also 50% will still be based on diesel technology, where we also have to invest in order not only to, me uh, to meet further emission requirements, but also to remain very competitive when it comes to fuel and diesel uh, consumption. So, but one of the major challenges that we all face together in this transformation is and that is a question that I hear often from our customers. MIN, can you tell me, I'm ready to basically invest into the future, but can you guarantee me that I can charge when I have to? That is a pretty tough question for us to answer. However, I think we need to face the facts here. If this transformation is supposed to be successful, we need to provide way more charging infrastructure than what we're seeing today. I know 
customers who are very advanced, they have made investments where possible in their own depots, where they have photovoltaic, where they have uh, already battery storage, where they have charging, so they become more and more independent in the infrastructure. But that is also true to the fact that they're primarily in regional hall. But if you're in long haul, you really have to plan your routes very carefully these days. And you need to utilize charging points that you find wherever they are. May they be with some of your competitors, may they be with service, may they be with some of your customers. What we do know is if our assumption is correct that 50% of our industry will turn to battery electric propulsion by 2030, we need way more high power charging across Europe. The estimate is between 30 and 50,000 charging stations required in order to, to substantiate that type of uh, trans transformation. At the same time, we also need obviously some hydrogen and that means round about 900 to 1,000 hydrogen charging points as well across Europe. What have we done? We have gotten together as an industry with Volvo and uh, Daimler Trucks and Trayton and we are starting to bring this uh, uh, transformation to our customers. We have founded Mylands as a, a charging company and uh, actually on Thursday morning I will be with Mylands in Antwerp in Brussels to open uh, number three of a public uh, commercial vehicle charging park and we want 1700 of those charging opportunities across Europe within the next uh, three years. But that is really only a drop in the water if you compare to 30 to 50,000 of these type of stations that we really require in order to support this type of transformation. But that also means, quite frankly, time is of the essence because we want to meet and we need to meet the CO2 requirements that uh, we have to fulfill by the mid of uh, 26 and thus we need to remove all the obstacles that our customers may have in order to avoid this type of transformation. And I think, you know, looking at the EU, a new EU Parliament, you know, our big ask is we need more infrastructure, we need less bureaucracy and we need higher speed. Let's see if this is really going to happen. But it also means for us as MIM, you know, we run 170 own service points, for example, in Germany alone. Yes, we are also making the investment in order to electrify, in quotation marks, our own service locations. And here I can tell you, in July, we will make some big announcements in this regard as well. Let's not forget, we as MIM, we are a full line portfolio provider. And that means, in our internal terms, with our new application excellence, we will provide a full range of CO2 neutral vehicles across all kinds of applications and uh, we will be in a situation where we can offer from a 2 ton to a 250 ton solution zero emission technology across our full line portfolio. Which means you can cover all sectors, you can cover all applications and you have the choice between diesel and battery electric and hydrogen. So there should not be a single reason for any customer to stay away from this transformation. However, again, let's not forget, there are the other blocks of infrastructure, of renewable energy, as well as uh, the business case and TCO in order to make this all happen. And this is the portfolio that you then can experience and see at the IAA in Hannover. We will have our hydrogen ICE truck available. We will have a broad portfolio of BEF technology vehicles available from 4x2 tractor application to 6x4 um, typical bodybuilder and chassis applications. And then we will also have our model year 25 next level TGE covering the uh, last mile segment in many cases available as well. And then on top of this, you can also experience test driving some of these vehicles on the uh, exterior side of the Hannover exhibition. Here you can see a first rendering on what you can expect 
And again, all this with the idea of simplifying business for our customers, providing them a transportation solution, not just a vehicle, but it's a combination of vehicle, service, services and financial packages to make it as simple as possible for our customers to invest into the future of transportation. And therefore, I'm looking forward together with all of my colleagues at MIN to welcome you at our stand here in Hannover where you can see that we will move people and goods in a zero emission technology environment. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Bauman. So uh, one of the major challenges, and that's what we learned today, is infrastructure. And Jan Heckmann will tell you a bit how we will deal and how we will display it on the IA transportation. So first question for the audience. Are there any questions? Apparently, no. So, um, oh, there is, of course. Don Enrico, you will get the mic. When, when you are talking of uh, uh, hydrogen solution fuel cell truck, uh, are you relying on compressed hydrogen 700 bar or liquid hydrogen? Compressed hydrogen 700 bar. There's an answer. <laughs> There's a second question from Shalene. Uh, it's great to hear about over 100 orders for the IC hydrogen truck. What is the price premium over a diesel truck? And if there is a large price premium, why is the price premium there? The price premium is uh, significant. Um, why is it significant? Because we are at the beginning of this technology. It's a limited edition at 200, uh, volume of 200 vehicles at this point. So you may guess that we don't have the scale yet. And we want to test the market to see is the scale possible. And then obviously we will see what that uh, will do relative to the pricing of the vehicle in the long run. And these.